a couple of months ago, I got really frustrated with this situation that's going on with bit storage, where you have like these little rubber pants that holds the bits in place, and they're incredibly difficult to pull out, and just hurt your fingers while you're doing that. And I went on this like mini rampage of trying to fix this situation. You know, magnetic bit storage on the side of a drill. Eventually, I came across the Vera Toolcheck Plus, and I built an EDC kit that was inspired by it with rotating bit storage in the, in the middle and iterated upon that one with a smaller kit which I'm still using to this day and it's really quite awesome. Uh, eventually also had this idea of like bit armor, you know like a shoulder pad that looks a little bit like armor that you'd find in Skyrim or Oblivion but then with bits on it magnetically connected and then I, I thought it would work out really nicely as a YouTube video but I never really thought it would work out as an actual thing that you would use on a daily basis so to say. This video was sponsored by Bamboo Lab. And one of the first things I did was buy myself a Vera Mini Ratchet. I think they call it a Cyclops, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, really small, really tiny. I was expecting it to be a little bit bigger, but it does fit this build really quite nicely because it's that small. And it's also magnetic, which I was a little bit concerned about. I wasn't sure if it was made out of titanium or anything like that. But pretty quickly, I took it to the 3D scanning station to get that into the CAD. After we've got those 3D scans sorted, we can take that to the iPad and model it out on Shape of 3D. That's the CAD software I use on this thing. I get that in the comments section so many times, like what, what iPad app is that? I highly recommend you check it out. It's really intuitive, it is quite expensive though, but you can also use it for free if you only have two projects open. In terms of the process that I go through with these little mini projects is, you know, stick to a singular tool. I use the 3D scan to outline it with the spline tool, create a little holder for it, and then think about like placement for magnets and that kind of stuff. I also have this assortment of sockets that I want to integrate into the design. These are from an Amazon Basics kit, so not the most high quality. Uh, I'm not going to 3D scan those because that's a little bit overkill. It's really quite quick doing it this way, just making a circle, extruding that, getting that hex sketch layer on there, and then making a rough design for it. And then you know, in the design process, you can check out if it looks half decent with those bits sticking out as well. Uh, I'm using these with the stem that's attached instead of that thing that Vera Mini Ratchet actually comes with, because my experience is that if you lose that singular little bit, which happens quite often, then none of your sockets work anymore, right? Whereas these, because they have the stem attached, they're a little bit longer for some reason, but then there's no risk of you losing one singular bit and then all of them becoming useless. Now, just like on the Vera Toolcheck Plus, I'm complementing that little mini ratchet with the Vera 838 ratcheting screwdriver. Now, integrating the tools themselves is really quite easy, but what I was a little bit concerned about is how to get that shoulder pad the correct size, where if you guesstimate that in the CAD software itself, it's never going to work out. I thought about like 3D scanning my shoulder, but I've tried that once before and it's really quite difficult to do. Uh, instead of that, I went back to the plasticine methods. Plasticine is basically like clay, but it doesn't really harden. And it's like Play-Doh. I assume that everybody's played with Play-Doh before. And then, you know, I just molded it into something that looked half decent and pressed the Vera Mini Ratchet and the Ratcheting screwdriver into that and also some bits and then hold it on my shoulder to get the curvature of my arm. This then gives us a really decent baseline to base our design off of. So we 3D scan that, import that into the CAD software, and then we have a really nice estimation of what size things need to be. But especially that curvature of the arm is really quite important uh, to get that right, you know, that, that it's not too uncomfortable to, to be there. And in terms of the implementation of all the tools, I just plonked everything where it would fit. So, you know, if there was a spare gap somewhere, I'd put some bit storage in that. And the final design is basically two components. So uh, one where all the bits are held in place and there's a bunch of magnets at the back over there, but also a little shoulder pad, which has magnets on it of itself. And that's supposed to clip between the coat and you know the outside. Uh, I wasn't too sure if that was gonna work, but I thought I'd risk it and try it out anyway. So I send that out to the Bamboo Lab Abon to be printed out in PETGHF. If this project ever turns out into something that's really, really usable, I'd love to print that in carbon. And Bamboo Lab is also sponsoring today's video. They sent over an X1C, which would be perfect for printing out in carbon reinforced filaments. I've also tried carbon on the A1 and it seems to be working really quite nicely, but with that enclosure around it, it's a lot easier because it keeps the temperature at a consistent level, so to say. I still really like the AMS unit that's on the X1C because it's an enclosed model, so it has like little bags of jelly in there which dries out the filament a little bit. But I also really like the A1 for the time-lapse quality, so whenever I'm printing something for myself, you know, off-camera, I do that in the X1C, but when I do anything for the channel, I make sure to print it on the A1 as well so that we can get those nice time-lapses out of this thing. 
one of the things that I truly appreciate about Bamboo Lab is the way that they integrate the 3D printer with the filament. So you can buy filament from them and I highly recommend you do because they come with little NFC tags in there. And you can buy refills or like full spools. If you have full spools, then you can just buy refills after that. And then you just swap out the little refill it has the NFC tag on there, put it on the AMS unit. It immediately recognizes which filament that is and it has a preset in there to make it work best with that filament. It does make me a little bit lazy where I'm just like sending stuff off to this thing and I'm not actually checking up on it until it's finished, which is not the best thing to do, but it's just so good that you, you don't have to anymore. So I highly recommend you check them out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And special thanks to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this video. So after taking care of the support strictures, I pushed in some magnets. And if you want these to stick in place even more solid, then I recommend putting some super glue around it. In this case, this is version one, so I want to make sure that I can remove the magnets if I need to, you know, iterate on the design. One of the main concerns that most people have when they see me integrating bits in this way is how solid is that? Are those bits going to fall out when you drop it or when you shake it a little bit harder and that kind of stuff? In general, it's been really solid and it depends on the magnets that you use, of course. So I've had two types. Uh, one type of magnet is just really super strong. I bought from the same manufacturer again, but these were a little bit thinner, like two millimeters thin, and those didn't work at all. Those are really uh, not that great for this. But the three millimeter thick magnets, they work perfectly. They just don't fall out whatsoever. So in this case, I messed up and I mixed the two magnets together. So you know, the 2.5 and the three millimeter magnets and some bits were held in place really solid, but the Vera mini ratchet just wasn't held in place at all. You do like a, a slight uh, shake and it would just fall off, uh, which was a big shame. I actually went back and like changed out some of the magnets and that helped a little bit. But I think in general, I just wanted to, you know, reiterate on this design and make it a bit more solid. So I feel like this could work, but the magnets are just not strong enough to hold it in place properly. I actually wasn't expecting to like this at all. Like I would have expected it to be way too heavy to actually hold onto the jacket and it does pull it down a little bit, but it's just like having something heavy in your pocket, so to say. I think I like it the most on the shoulder itself, but up here, could be useful for something else. It just doesn't, it looks a lot more psychopathic as well. So the first thing I wanted to iterate on was the Vera 838. That one falls out quite easily as well and it has a magnet at the bottom. But if we take that magnet off, then the entire shaft can like slide through it and you can keep the bits in there. Uh, but currently you have to take the bits off to store the Vera. And in that way you can also like easily change out the bits. I have this little rubber band which you'd normally put uh, between a pipe I believe to like give it water, you know, seal it watertight. And I was thinking of adjusting the design a little bit so that I would hold that 838 in place. So I basically used a circular sketch layers and gave it an indent around it. And that indent has a little lip on it as well so that we can snap on that little rubber band and that keeps the Vera 838 in place. Uh, I was hoping that you could just drop it in from the top still instead of having to latch it around and that works out quite nicely. In terms of the ratchet, I made a little extra clip on thing or like a holder around it and some extra magnets and I was hoping that that would hold it in place a little bit better. If you're enjoying the video so far then definitely consider leaving a like, leaving a comment or subscribing to the channel. You can also check out my Patreon page, I upload all of the designs that I make over there and your support goes a really long way. Special thanks to all the Patreons that were over there already. Getting that little rubber band on there was a little bit more difficult than I had hoped but you just stretch it out quite a lot so that it becomes extra thin and then it snaps on. So the new matting solution is really quite rudimentary, like you're just poking holes through the fabric and then making the bolts go through. And this is a jacket from Jack and Jones. I'll try to link it down below, but I checked it out just a moment ago and it doesn't seem like they're selling it anymore, which is incredibly frustrating. I personally try to wear clothing from brands like Fial Rava who have been around for a very long time and hopefully will be around for a very long time. If my pants, for example, break, I could just buy exact, exactly those pants again from them in exactly the same size and I just know they're going to work. I'm just not one of those people who, you know, 
it's fashionable or anything like that. I just want to wear clothing that works and don't want to think about it when I have to buy new new stuff. Now, I didn't really account for the thickness of the fabric when I was thinking about this plate mount situation and so I had to take a pair of scissors to that, cut it in half. Now because I'm kind of rushing to get this video out, I didn't account for the bolt length either but ideally you'd account for that in the design process so that they're not sticking out into your arm. I just was not expecting this to function at all, like I thought this was going to be a really bad project and it would take a, a ton of like rethinking it to, to get it to function properly. It's not like a complete success or anything like that but I think it's a really fun little novelty and it might actually be useful in certain scenarios where you just wear a jacket and you got your stuff right there and it's very visual to where you can actually see if there's anything missing or which things you need also plays into your muscle memory, right? You just snap it upwards, really easy to grab a little mini ratchet. If we went back to that prior model where it has like a, a magnetic patch underneath it and it sticks to any kind of jacket you have or maybe even a t-shirt, that would be really quite cool. Now, but I really like how you can just change the bit while it's still in its spot, right? So plug it in right there, grab it. And the same with the mini ratchet over there, you can grab a bit, plug it in and grab the ratchet. We'll just leave it in there for, for storage. So you see this in every single build that you do, even though you know it won't work out. By doing it anyway, you learn something new that you can maybe implement onto a future version or a different build that you might be working on. So if you have a bad idea, it's definitely not, not worth it to act on it.